Wine Man TV. I'm your host, Tamara Tan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. I'm wearing the Seahawks gear because the Super Bowl's tomorrow. This won't go out until Tuesday, so it'll already be over with. By the time you see this, my prediction was Patriots 35, Eagles 28, and the only reason I do that is because I want to take the sting out of another Patriots Super Bowl victory. I want the Eagles to win. I do, and I hope they do. Uh, I think they can, uh, just have to out-strategize uh, Bella Chuck or Bella, you know, Up Chuck, Bella Chuck, or whatever you want to call him. A lot of people say, well, uh, you know, you're just one of those many Patriots haters. Just to inform you, just to inform you, I've hated the Patriots since the days of Steve Grogan. When I was in grade school, I hated the Patriots. It has nothing to do with Belichick. It has nothing to do with Tom Brady. It has nothing to do with any of that. Here's Sauvignon. Um, these are four cabs I've never tasted. So I'm excited about this. I've never tasted these. They're not at the store for all you watchers locally. By the way, thank you for watching. I'm getting good viewership now, and I really love it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Bill Persich, for saying you watched the whole video. That's awesome. Very cool. I like to hear that. And you enjoyed it. That's the main thing, that you learned something. Cabernet Sauvignon, the top-selling red wine in the United States. It is the king of red wines. Queen, whatever you want to call it. It is the top dog in the red wine world. It started, uh, it was a chance crossbreeding of Sauvignon Blanc, a white wine, and Cabernet Franc back in the 17th century in southern France. So that's how Cabernet Sauvignon started. Well, it turns out it's a hardy, great, thick skin, late blooming, easy to grow, so it became very popular. And I know all of you know this, it really started gaining popularity in Bordeaux. We're on the left bank of the Joan River. They grow primarily, primarily Cabernet Sauvignon, and a lot of the big dogs of the Bordeaux region, first growths, use Cabernet Sauvignon. Of course, they blend it with Merlot and Cab Franc. But, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon really started taking off. Um, then in 76, that big guy, uh, the Judgment of Paris, <coughs> Warren Warnowski's, Warren Warnowski's uh, Cabernet Stag's Leap beat out Top Bordeaux's in that challenge. So, once again, it became more and more popular. And today, almost anybody that drinks wine drinks Cabernet Sauvignon. I mean, drinks red wine, I should say. Drinks Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, really love this wine. Actually, grown extensively. It was the number one grown grape, red uh, premium grape, grown in the world until the late 1980s, early 1990s when Merlot took over. And of course, we know Merlot was devastated during that movie Sideways. So, may have creeped up a little bit. 600 back in 2012, so this, you know, five years ago, 650,000 acres of Cabernet Sauvignon were planted. Top state, top country is France growing it, then Chile, Chile, then the USA, then Argentina, then uh, Italy, Af South Africa, and Argentina. So, you know, it's, it's grown all over the world. And uh, 2013, City Limits, Cabernet Sauvignon, Columbia Valley. This rolls in at $18. Uh, let's see, anything else on here? Lola Winemaker's Dog, Morgan the Winemaker. There it goes. A uh, wine has no limits. It's worth the drive. There you go. Okay, let's roll in on this one. Pretty cool label, I think. There you go. City Limits, Cabernet Sauvignon, Columbia Valley. For a long time, Washington was known for Rieslings. Uh, they're, I tell you what, they make great Merlot in Washington State. And we've had this discussion many times. Washington State got the big glass. Get a little bit uh, sloppy here, I guess. Maybe that's in the uh, football genre of just, you know, just going after it. You know what I mean? So let's see what we get on those. Good color on this one. Actually, pretty good color. Let's see. See that? Good color. Um, let's see what we get on the nose. So it's a little bit dusty to me. Got the you know big glass and get more aromatics. Getting a slight uh, cherry and um, kind of.
kind of leather, kind of reminds me of dusty leather with a little bit of cherry. A little bit challenged on the nose, actually. I'm not getting a lot on it. Uh, let's see what we get on the palate. these days, and I, I like this, it, this has a lot of chocolate to it. It's like chocolate covered cherries and currants. A little bit missing on the mid palate in this one, and then at the very end I get like a vanilla, uh, which comes from the oak. Vanilla, a lot of spices, I like the spice aspect in this wine. And you know, you get the spices from the oak, so there's some people that are kind of anti-oak, I know there are guys out there that are like that, but really, it's like anything, when we make things, we tend to add spices, we tend to add things to that meal uh, to make it better, to enhance the flavors of what we're cooking. Oak is the same way. If used properly, can really add dimensions to the wine. simple cab. I'm not feeling it at all. I really don't, it doesn't have much going on. Very one-dimensional. I mean, I get that kind of chocolate, a little bit of cherries, very light on the mid-palate, and then into the finish you get a little bit of spice. But overall, for $18, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I wouldn't waste my money on this wine. I'm going to go C minus, D, I'm just going to go plain up C minus. I think it's below average. I think it's $18. I, I went on wine search to look this up. But for 18 bucks, yeah, I could find you 20 more cabs that are better than that. Let's move on. I thought this was kind of ironic. This came across my plate. Brady Vineyards, 2014, Cabernet Sauvignon, Paso Robles. Paso Robles, this rolls in at $20. And Paso Robles is tough because, you know, it's very warm there, and cab can tend to get, although I've had some really good ones, tend to get a little bit flabby, a little bit too fruit forward. Now, there are people that really like those cabs. I mean, Wild Horse does really good. That's from Paso Robles. But I've also had a, one called Ancient Peaks that I thought was really good from that area. So, you know, just the area alone doesn't dictate whether it's going to be good or bad. It's all about the winemaker and how long they ripen the fruit, what the alcohol levels are. All of that matters, even with the Cabernet Sauvignon, because, because it can flourish just about anywhere. It's real tempting to do that. So here we went. To Brady Vineyards, you know, I'm not going to let the name of that wine skew my judgment. Just saying. So, another, about the same color as the other one. Let's see what we get on the nose. So, this one has a kind of a brightness to the nose, which I think is kind of cool. I get a little bit of licorice on the nose. I get a little bit of eucalyptus coming through. Currants and cherries, which are very typical of cat. But I do like the uh, licorice characteristic and eucalyptus kind of just barely sneaking in there. Yeah, a little bit of that minty sort of thing going on. Let's see what we get on the palate. This cap, good structure, um, solid current notes, um, very, but it's not too fruit forward. It's well balanced. I like it. I get a little bit of heat on the back end, you know, like cough syrup heat on the backside, but overall, you know, not too bad. shows a ton of tobacco. Cool, that's very cool. A little bit of worn leather that sneaks in with that tobacco flavor, and that drives right into the finish with the current. Good solid tannins. They're approachable now. You can drink this now, but this will definitely lay down. That heat is in the back of the throat. Some of you are against, you know, 
and I hopefully I can just find the alcohol really fast. It never seems to happen when I go to look for it. Um, there it is. Fifteen percent. Fifteen. Does that say fifteen nine? Fifteen percent alcohol. So yeah, it's got the heat, but it's it's well made. Don't get me wrong. You can feel it in the back. I can still feel it down here. But I'm not opposed to that if it's made well, if it has good structure, has good balances, has all those things. I have no idea where I got this, but I love that tobacco. Big time tobacco hit. Long finish, but it's clean. I mean, you feel the heat, but it's clean, fresh, well balanced. I like this wine a lot. For $2 more, you get $30 more worth of wine. 20 bucks. I hope that price is correct. I want to apologize real quickly. I quoted a price on my YouTube uh, episode with Curlew Sellers Whites, and I quoted the uh, rosé at, I think, around 16 bucks, and I was way off. It's in the uh, low 20s. Um, I have it at the store now at 20 bucks, but um, yeah, it's not that inexpensive. It's still a really great rosé worth every penny you're paying for it. But I'm sorry about that for those who may come down to the store later and try it. It's a little bit more than that, at 20 bucks. A solid wine, a solid cab on this one. I looked it up on Wine Search, it said average price around $20. So that's what we're going with. It could be around 24 bucks. But even if it's 24 bucks, I think this is an excellent cab. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go straight up A minus. I think it's solid. I think some people might not like that warmness on the backside, but I'm telling you, it's done very well. Now, I'm going purely by price here. I'm going from the least expensive to the more expensive, just because I've never tried them before. I have no idea. Uh, this is an interesting uh, label. Barter and Trade, second annual edition, volume two, number two, Cabernet Sauvignon, 2015, uh, Washington State, Let's see, what does it say? Okay, so it doesn't, uh, Washington, wait a minute. That's weird. So it's bottled. Let's see, what does it say? 917 miles south of the cellared and bottled company, Paso Robles, California. So these guys are located in Paso Robles. Um, I'm assuming. Wow, that threw me off. It says here, Grapes Cabernet Sauvignon, 93, 92%. No. Yeah, 92, 90, yeah. Uh, Cab Franc, 4%, Merlot, 4%. Uh, New French Oak, 30%. Seasoned French Oak, uh, 50%. Appalachian Columbia Valley, 100%. Interesting. So it's a Washington State cab, but it's from Paso Robles, Paso Robles, California. Interesting. Wow, that threw me off. Uh, Jed down at um, Lake County, California, does a um, Washington Blau Frankish. So it's not uncommon to see that. This was in at $20. I always tell myself to look at the labels a little more closely before I do the episode, and I forgot to do that, so I apologize for that little hiccup there. Um, a little bit darker than the other two. I don't know if you can see that at all, but it is a little bit darker. Let's see what we get on the nose. This is solid current. I mean, absolutely solid current. I'm getting a little tobacco element coming through on the nose. A little bit of uh, bark too, which is interesting. Let's see what we get on the palate. Sweet tannins on this one. I mean, front to finish, but it never goes. Um, I wouldn't say it goes to fruit forward. The tannins are very sweet. 
solid wine, good structure. Tannins aren't quite as uh, uh, big as they were on the, uh, the Brady wine, but But they get a real grip action on the backside. Boy, this one begs for food. This begs for a big steak or something. Um, I get leather. I get currants. I get an interesting, almost like a parazine, almost like a, a little bit of not green bell pepper, but maybe a little bit of Brussels sprout or, or something right in the mid. But it's, 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 it's very subdued, just slightly there, which you'd expect out of a cab. A lot of red flowers and tobacco on the finish, which I find quite interesting. Boy, that blackberry leaf Brussels sprout thing comes really big on the back end. I'm just really seriously getting that now. Huge grip on this thing. I need a piece of cheese. I need something in my mouth right now because it is drying out my mouth. I feel like I could spit out sand right now. My mouth is salivating, it's so dry. But that's a solid cab. Very solid cab. Very interesting. Um, I should have done a little bit more. I didn't see this part about Paso Robles, California. Cellared and bottled by SR Jones and Company, Paso Robles. So interesting. I wonder where they source their fruit from. That reminds me a little bit of an old-fashioned cab, you know, back in the days when they, all of the cabs from Napa had that parazine thing going on with them. A little bit more on the green side, but this is, this has a lot going on. Currants, parazines, uh, you know, that kind of Brussels sprout, blackberry leaf sort of thing going on. Uh, not too heavily though, which is interesting. Um, leather, tobacco, it lingers on the finish. I'm still tasting it. However, same price as the uh, Brady. I'm going to go, I get one A minus on the Brady. I'm going to go B plus A minus on this one. Just a notch below the Brady. Both really good wines. Are doing, and both will lay down. Absolutely will lay down for up to 10 years. I, I see that all. I can see that easily with these wines. Okay, let's move on to the last one. Uh, Farm Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon 2015. Um, interesting, John Anthony is a vintner, this world's in it, $40, farm, it just says farm, it's like farm vineyards, nothing, $40, okay, so now we're getting into big boy, and if you ever wonder why the Napa cabs are more expensive, well, yeah. the fruit, the demand for cab is high, uh, the demand for property in Napa Valley is high, very little property left there, and cab, you know, can garner up to $7,000 an acre for cab because there's such a high demand for Napa Valley cab. You start paying six, $7,000 a ton, prices have to go up. They have to recoup your money, right? Let's see what we get on the notes. I am sloppy. Big time sloppy, big time. Oh, eucalyptus, immediately. Eucalyptus with a little Vicks Vapor Rub coming through, right on the nose, right, it hits me right off the bat. Definitely dark cherries and currants coming through. I love that eucalyptus thing though. Let's see what we get on the palate. The fruit is definitely um, bigger on this one than the other three, for sure. But, that being said, if you like black currants, you're going to love this wine. In fact, it almost goes to the raisin level, but not quite. It doesn't quite get there. It's very, very smooth. 
It's polished tannins on this baby. It has depth to it for sure. I'm getting um, a lot of chocolate on this wine. In fact, it feels like I just maybe have just finished eating a Kit Kat bar, a Twix bar. Uh, you know, that kind of chocolate coming through on the backside. But solid, solid. Again, once again, I feel like I could spit out a gallon of sand right now. The grip on the backside of this wine. So it has good structure. The tannins are solid. Uh, the fruit is there for sure. Uh, I get a little tobacco on the finish. I get the sense of that kind of minty eucalyptus flavor hanging on the mid palate into the finish. It's just kind of lingering there. Um, wow. This is not a cab for everybody. This is a cab, I, if you like, like I said, it's well built, it has a lot, of, almost to the raisin point, but at the same time it has all that good structure with it. I like that minty that comes through, that kind of eucalyptus sort of mint thing that comes through up the mid palate. I like this wine. I like it um, for a whole lot of different reasons than I like these other ones. It has solid currant notes, good tobacco, chocolate. It isn't too fruit forward. Uh, I think the raisin element that comes through a little bit isn't, well obviously it's right. Okay, I get that. I'm just trying to find the right words so you understand what I'm trying to say, that's all. Um, this is 15.4 uh, alcohol, there it is. Uh, the warmth on the back end. So all of you guys are anti-alcohol, stay away from this one, but I think it's well built, I think it's good fruit. I think it's a solid cab, totally different than the Brady, totally different than all of them really. Um, you can see this is a style that a lot of people prefer. They're not, they don't feel bad about spending 40 bucks for this wine because of that style. I'm going to go A minus on that one as well. Um, I think, uh, you know, for 40 bucks, it's not a bad play. Might be a little bit more than I'd want to spend for it, but not too bad. I think it falls right in maybe a good price range for the quality that you're getting. There you go. Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, again, once again, I appreciate it. I, got, I just want a quick shout out to Patty. Thank you for the advice or the uh, uh, suggestion on maybe. She watched my Chianti episode, and I do some private wine tasting things. Uh, well, not private. I have some wine events that I do. And she said, well, maybe you could do like that sort of thing at the wine event. So thank you very much for that, that suggestion. Uh, unfortunately, some of my tastings are booked way out, so you know, I'd have to think about it like way, way, way out there. You keep watching. Oh, and thanks for watching. You keep watching. And I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.